Hello future RMTs, welcome to our third lecture. And in this lecture, what we're going to discuss is all about renal function. Okay? So for our learning objectives, we have 3.1. Identify the components of the nephron, kidney, and excretory system. 3.2 is to discuss the flow of blood through the nephrons. And 3.3 is to analyze the result of laboratory procedures used to evaluate glomerular filtration, tubular reabsorption, and secretion and renal blood flow. To start with, what will be the overview of this discussion? It is divided into two parts. You know, the part one will be focused on the renal physiology, anatomy and physiology, and the part two will focus on the renal function test. Okay. So for this video, what we are going to discuss is all about the renal physiology. Okay. So let's start. The renal anatomy or the anatomy of our kidneys. Our kidney is composed of 1 to 1.5 million nephrons, which is considered as the functional units of, nef of our kidney. No? Uh, a normal individual, a normal people have two kidneys, so one pair of kidneys. And each kidney is consisting of or consists of 1, point, uh, 1 to 1 1.5 million nephrons. Okay? These nephrons are classified into two. We have the cortical nephrons and the duxta medullary nephrons. So what is the difference between the two when we said uh, cortical nephrons that is responsible for the removal of waste products and reabsorption of filtered substances or nutrients while our juxta, juxta medullary nephron is the one that is responsible for the urine concentration that lies on the medullary part of the nephron. Okay? And our kidney have seven functions. So, ano po yung mga functions ng kidney natin? Number one, excretion of metabolic waste. Number two, regulation of water and electrolyte balance. Number three, regulation of acid-base balance. Number four, regulation of arterial pressure. Number five, regulation of erythrocyte production. And number six, glucose synthesis. And lastly is the regulation of 1,2,5-dihydroxy vitamin D3. Now, these are the functions of kidneys. That's why kidneys is a very important part of our body because it serves a lot of functions and uh, marami po siyang ginagawa in our body. One of which is the excretion of metabolic waste. As we discussed in the previous video, you know, we said that urine is composed of metabolic waste products that is excreted by the body because these metabolic waste products no, will, not, will not contribute no, in the homeostasis or balance of our body. Therefore, the mechanism of our body is to excrete these metabolic waste products. No? Uh, the kidneys are the primary means of eliminating waste products. Okay, the, these waste products are the products of metabolism that are no longer needed in the body. Okay? Uh, these products include urea, which is from the metabolism of amino acid. We also have creatinine, which is from the metabolism of creatine from the muscle. We also have the uric acid, which is from the metabolism of urine substances. And we have the end product of hemoglobin degradation, or simply our bilirubin. We also have various hormones that can be found or that can be excreted in our urine. These waste products must be eliminated from the body so that uh, the body will not have a toxic effect from these waste products. So from the word itself, waste products, so it might contain toxic waste or toxic products that can cause harm. No? Uh, our body or our kidney is responsible for eliminating those that we don't need. In our body. Okay? The second function of our kidney is the regulation of water and electrolyte balance. In order to maintain homeostasis, excretion of water and electrolyte must be precisely match the intake. Now, in our previous discussion, we said that the water level or the urine output is directly proportional to the amount of water that is in uh, that is the amount of water intake or the intake of water. No? Uh, 
it must be therefore regulated. So, our kidney is the one responsible for the water and electrolyte balance. So, how come our ba or our kidney balance the electrolytes? Number one, through the use of or through the help of antidiuretic hormone or ADH. This ADH will have or will will reabsorb our water in the proximal converted tubule. No? In the proximal converted tubule, the water reabsorption will occur. Okay. Aside from that, no, we also have the uh, electrolyte balance or electrolyte reabsorption such as sodium, potassium, and calcium. That is also essential. Even though, so we said that those are those are uh, excess in the body will be excreted. That will go to the filtrate and will be excreted by the means of urine. So there are some substances, particularly water and electrolytes, that can be reabsorbed in our tubules. Kasi po nafi-filter sila ng ating glomerulus. Our glomerulus will be, uh, is able to filter uh, substances with a molecular weight less than 70,000 daltons. So since water and, elect and electrolytes has a molecular weight less than 70,000 daltons, then nagpapas through po sila dun sa ating glomerulus. And since our body promotes those nutrients that still needed, no? Through the, through the help of ADH and antidiuretic uh, antidiuretic hormone ADH and aldosterone. So, yung nire-absorb po sila ng katawan natin. Okay? Remember, intake, uh, if intake succeeds, then the amount the, the amount of the substance in the body will be in, increased. No? If intake is less, then definitely the excretion is also less. The amount of those substances in the body will be decreased. Um, the intake of water and many electrolytes is governed mainly by eating and drinking habits of the people. So, kagaya ng sinasabi natin in the past discussions, no, water intake directly affect no, our output, urine output. Okay? Another function of our kidney is the acid-base regulation. Now, remember, speaking of acid-base, the kidney contribute to the acid-base balance. So, ano po yung normal balance or normal pH of the blood? The normal pH of the blood is set at 7.35 to 7.45 with an average pH of 7.4. So, our kidney is responsible for the regulation of our pH or uh, acid-base balance through the production of bicarbonate and the production of our hydrogen ion. No, that will promote the acid-base balance. Now, speaking of acid-base balance, the kidneys contributes to the acid-base balance along with the lungs. So, we have what in, in clinical chemistry, we have what we call the respiratory acidosis, respir respiratory alkalosis. We also have metabolic acidosis and metabolic, uh, metabolic alkalosis. Now, if our kidney is not responsible for the maintenance of these, for, uh, of these uh, balances, no, we will have what we call uh, metabolic alkalosis or metabolic acidosis rather or sometimes will lead into tubular acidosis instead of uh, producing an acidic urine no sino yung nagiging acidic yung kidneys because of the uh, impairment in the water base or in the acid base balance okay uh, hydrogen phosphate no Dihydrogen phosphate, bicarbonate are those that are essential as the buffering system of our body for the acid-base balance. Another another uh, function of our kidney is the regulation of arterial <coughs> arterial pressure. Okay, as referred from the renal function, the kidney play a dynamic role in the long-term regulation of arterial pressure by excreting variable amounts of sodium and water. Conversely, the kidneys contribute to the short arterial pressure regulation by uh, secreting hormones, vasoactive factors, or substances that may lead into the formation of vasoactive products. Another function of our kidney is the production of erythrocyte, regulation of erythrocyte production. Sir, are you sure that one of the function of our kidneys is the regulation of erythrocyte? Yes, because our kidney is responsible for the production of what we call our secretion, an hormone of the, uh, an hormone, no, which is known as the EPO. EPO stands for erythropoietin. 
This hormone will give signal or will stimulate the production of red cell in the bone marrow by hemat hematopoietic uh, system or stem system. Stem system. No? Uh, in the bone marrow. EPO or erythropoietin is a hormone that stimulates the production of our blood, of our red cells. No? One important stimulus of erythropoietin is the secretion in the kidney in case of hypoxia. That is why if you know someone who are experiencing kidney failure or kidney disease, ito po laging nakikipos ano yung laging nila experience. And uh, one of the cause or one of the symptoms experienced by a patient with kidney failure or kidney disease is anemia. Bumababa po yung production of red blood cell, bumababa yung production of hemoglobin due to the impairment production of our erythropoietins. Give signal to the uh, hematopoietic stem marker which is our uh, bone marrow. No? Toxic CEPO, siya yung nagsisignal kay bone marrow that bone marrow, you have to secrete, you have to produce, you have to produce, and you have to make red cells. So if you have a problem in kidneys, so what the, one of the one of the conditions that you might experience is the impairment of the production of erythropoietin. That's why we can you can have or you can develop anemia due to uh, EPO or decrease in EPO production. Another function of our kidney is the glucose synthesis. Metabolically, kidneys synthesize glucose from amino acids which are non-glucose in nature. No? The other precursors during prolonged fasting that can cause uh, the state of fasting through a process of what we call So as we all know in your biochemistry class, uh, I, I know and I am sure that Professor Emil was able to introduce is gluconeogenesis. So, uh, our kidney is also a factor or has a function gluconeogenesis when the kidneys will have the capacity to add glucose to the blood uh, during the prolonged period of fasting. And last function of our kidney is the regulation of 1 to 5 dihydroxyvitamin D3 which is important in calcium homeostasis. The the, the kidneys produce active form of vitamin D3, uh, vitamin D3, which is the 1,2,5-dihydroxyvitamin D, also known as the calciferol by hydro hydroxylation. Indeed, remember that calciferol is essential for the form for the normal uh, calcium level or what we call the calcium homeostasis deposition in the blood. Uh, I'm sorry, in the bone. And Calcium reabsorption by gastrointestinal tract. Okay, also our kidney, uh, also calciferol is regulated in our kidney. Okay, so those are the functions of our kidney, and uh, those are the things that I want you to remember how important our kidney is. Okay, so excretion of metabolic waste, one of the major functions of our kidney, regulation of water and electrolyte. Regulation of acid waste through the buffering system, regulation of arterial pressure, regulation of erythrocyte production through the through the release of hormone erythropoietin, the uh, uh, development of what we call gluconeogenesis, and regulation of 1 to 5 dihydroxy vitamin D3 for the calcium homeostasis. Now, how about for the renal blood flow? Uh, remember, guys, that our uh, our kidney no can or the average the average body or the average kidney have a 1000 ml per minute renal plasma flow okay again i repeat uh, a normal person or normal individual has a renal blood flow of 1200 ml per minute and a total plasma flow of 6000 uh, 600 to 700 ml per minute. Our kidney is the one responsible for filtering metabolic substances, metabolic waste products, as what we have discussed in the previous slide. Okay, take note that blood will enter, or blood from the systemic circulation will enter into afferent arterioles. Okay, and then these afferent arterioles, no, 
uh, will help <coughs> not to maintain uh, metabolic way uh, to maintain to is in the blood. Sabi natin, blood contains the metabolic waste products and these metabolic waste products will be filtered through our glomerulus. Therefore, the blood that will enter through the, through our afferent artery now will pass through to our glomerulus. There are two ways that will happen or two possible things that will happen. There are there are filtrates now and these filtrates will remain referred as our urine urine formation okay. and those that will retain in the circulation in the blood will go back into the circulation and what and will pass through to our efferent arterioles. Efferent arterioles helps to create hydrostatic pressure that maintains the consistency of the capillary pressure. Now, what will happen to the filtrate? Filtrate has a specific gravity of 1.010. Remember that the so, has a uh, has a specific gravity of 1.0 1.010 or 1.10 okay. uh, which will which will be the factor in the urine formation so, so from glomerulus no from glomerulus it will pass through to our Bowman's capsule so big sabihin those molecular substances less than or greater than 70,000 daltons will remain in our blood one, one of the best example of a molecular of a biomolecule that will remain or that will not pass through our glomerulus is the protein. This protein has a molecular weight greater than 70,000 daltons and the protein has a positively charged then it will not pass through to our uh, glomerulus. Okay? So I will discuss that later. So those substances that will pass through our glomerulus go to Bauman's capsule going to proximal tubule the urine formation. So, ibig sabihin, kung ikaw ay waste product, instead of you will pass through the efferent arterioles, you will pass through the Bauman's capsule going to the proximal convoluted tubule. The proximal convoluted tubule will promote a reabsorption of, of nutrients. No? Later in tubular reabsorption, we will discuss what are the nutrients being reabsorbed by the proximal convoluted tubule? Okay. After passing into the proximal convoluted tubule, the filtrate will pass the loop of Hindley now going, going to the uh, ascending loop, uh, descending loop of Hindley now going to distal convoluted tubule. From distal convoluted tubule going to collecting ducts. And this collecting ducts will affect the final concentration of our urine. From collecting ducts to calyx, from calyx going to our urinary bladder and ready for excretion. So that's how our urine works. So yung blood, yung plasma, finifilter ni glomerulus, and this, and this filtrate will have a specific of 1.010. And then, uh, it will pass through the proximal convoluted tubule through the possibility of reabsorption of some nutrients, particularly electrolytes, glucose, or amino acids. No? Our collecting duct is responsible for the final concentration of our urine. No? So, how about for the renal blood flow? For the renal blood flow, so again, those substances that will remain in the circulation are those substances that not pass through the glomerulus. It is sila yung mga natira sila yung mga hindi waste products okay. and the renal plasma flow is 600 to 700 ml no our uh, total blood flow is 1200 ml so ganun kadami uh, that's how much blood pass through our kidney again uh, the afferent arterioles is where the blood enters into the glomerulus, also known as the renal artery. The reason why our kidney is also responsible for the arterial pressure. So those blood that leaves the glomerulus will exit through our efferent arterioles. Okay, peritubular capillaries and proximal convoluted tubules. No? 
peritubular capillaries din kung magpapas ang ating blood na mag-exit through the efferent arteriole. Proximal convoluted tubule yung pong ating mga filtrate that will pass and that will be formed as the urine. Okay? Next is the glomerular filtration. Remember guys that our glomerulus is composed of 8 half capillary lobes which serves as the glomerular filtration barrier of our glomerulus. Okay, take note that glomerulus is a non-selective filter of plasma which allows the pass-through of a molecules less than 70,000 70, daltons. No? Hydrostatic pressure, oncotic pressure, as well as renin and angiotensin system no? affects the glomerular filtration. And as you can see in the illustration, no, as you can see in the illustration, the blood enters into the afferent arterioles and will pass through the glomerulus. Again, si glomerulus as a non-selective filter will filter those substances with less than 70,000 daltons. If you have 70,000 daltons, then you will pass through the glomerulus. And take note that our glomerulus has what we call the shield of Negativity. And what is this shield of negativity? Shield of negativity refers to uh, the ability of our substance, the ability of glomerulus, no? the ability of the glomerulus to substances na negative charge. Okay? Without this uh, shield of negativity, our glomerulus will have an impaired production in the we have impaired production in put that our glomerulus has what we call field of shield of negativity. This, this field of negativity repels molecules with a positive charge. The best example of a molecule with a positive charge is our protein. There is a problem in the filtration. Glomerulus. Like glomerular damage. There is a problem in the shield of negativity. No? Uh, in, yung, mga, yung ating glomerulus hindi na niya nakifilter. However, we have cases of what we call pseudo false positive or false protein in the urine. Uh, conditions are seen in an athlete. No? with extraneous exercises. So, bakit? Mabilis po yung flow ng blood. No, mabilis yung flow ng blood through the glomerulus. Pagpasok ng blood in the glomerulus. So, nahihirap ang mag-filter. Apektuhan yung pressure ng ating glomerulus sa pag-filter ng blood. Which, in case, or which in this example, nagkakameron po tayo ng presence of protein in the urine. However, these are non-pathological conditions. An individual had an extraneous exercise. Okay. Next uh, action. Okay. Nangangati po ang aking binte. Next action of our uh, glomerulus is factors that affect the filtration. So, ito po yung mga factors na nakaka-apekto kung bakit nakakameron ng impaired production or nagiging maganda po yung ating filtration ng blood, ng plasma, in the glomerulus. So, we have the cellular structure which refers to the uh, shield of negativity. We have the Bauman's capsule. We have the hydrostatic oncotic pressure. And we also have the renin aldosterone angiotensin system. Okay? So, kagaya po nang sinabi natin kanina, uh, our cellular structure is composed of three barriers. And what are these three barriers? We have the capillary wall membrane, we have the basement membrane and we have the visceral epithelium of the Bauman's capsule. Now, as you can see in this illustration, no, uh, in figure B, uh, the protein in the blood will pass through the glomerulus. However, since malaki nga po yung molecular weight ng, ng ating protein, hindi po siya nagpa-pass through sa ating glomerulus. Okay? This illustration shows how our uh, glomerulus filters. No? Uh, how the glomerulus filters the plasma. Okay? And there are three walls or barriers, no? 
in the cellular structure of the bowel of the glomerulus, the capillary wall membrane, the base basement membrane, the visceral epithelium of the Bauman's capsule. Now take note of this. I want you to take this point. I take away key point number one. If there is no, or uh, if it were not the shield of negativity, all urine would have a positive result in urine. Uh, all urine will have a positive result in protein. So nawala yung protein, no? Please take note. If it is not the shield of negativity, all urine would have positive result in protein urine strips. Okay, bakit? Kasi magpapastro lang siya doon. So, sir, sabi mo, malaki po yung molecular weight ng protein. Yes. No? However, since wala nga, wala, nagpapastro siya, wala itong field of negativity, walang another factor that will prevent the, pass, the passage of protein, so pwede siyang makita doon. So, that, to the help of our shield of negativity, hindi po nagpapastro kasi nare-repel no? yung ating positively charged molecules. Okay, take note that the presence of protein in the urine is an indication of renal disease and an, an indication of impairment in the glomerular function. Okay? Uh, how about the glomerular filtration or glomerular pressure? Rather, I want you to take note of these two things. Number one is Dilation of afferent arterioles and constriction of the efferent arterioles prevent the increase of blood level of toxic waste. So, ano yung ginagawa dito? Nagdadilate ang afferent arterioles and constriction of the efferent so that the blood will pass through the glomerulus. At hindi kung constricted po ang ating efferent arterioles, hindi agad magpapas through ang blood so that our glomerulus will be capable to filter enough blood no filter the blood filter the toxic waste products in the blood that is being affected by the glomerular pressure another thing is increase in blood pressure result in the constriction of afferent to prevent over filtration or damage of the glomerulus so kung mataas ang blood pressure ibig sabihin mataas din or mabilis din yung flow ng blood so, the mechanism of the body, instead of dilating the afferent arterioles, which will facilitate too much blood that will that can enter or that can pass through the glomerulus, the mechanism of our body is to constrict, no? so that lumiit lang yung buta so that the blood that will flow in our glomerulus is mababa. Kasi kung mataas din yan, mahihirapan, maapektuhan yung oncotic pressure natin, maapektuhan yung filtration ng ating glomerulus. So, kung maliit lang yung dilate constricted lang yung dadaanan ng blood, maliit lang yung volume ng blood that will pass through our glomerulus so that our glomerulus will be able to filter it well. No? And will prevent the overfiltration and the damage, no? too much volume of blood that will enter into, uh, that will pass through our glomerulus. Okay? Now, uh, we have also what we call the RAAS or the renin aldosterone uh, renin angiotensin aldosterone system which helps to regulate the blood flow and within the glomerulus. So, si RAAS, nakakatulong daw siya sa pagre-regulate ng blood flow saan? Sa katawan at pagre-regulate ng blood flow saan? Sa glomerulus. Also, RAAS is responsible for the change in blood pressure as well as plasma sodium content. So the question is, how does this system affect or how does the system respond on the blood flow and response on the change in blood pressure as well as in the plasma sodium content? Okay, now I want you to remember this one guys that if you have or if you are experiencing a low blood pressure, so I will write for a while, just allow me to write, Okay. Uh, if you have low blood pressure, okay, mababa po ang ating blood pressure, it means that our water level is also low. If our water level is also low, it means that our sodium level is also low. So, ibig sabihin, our blood pressure is, or the level 
of our sodium level or the level of sodium ba yan sir the cell, the, the low the no, go, go ahead mark kaya mo yan no the level of sodium and the level of water is great is directly proportional to our blood pressure so kaya kung matatandaan mo if you are or if your mom and your dad or your lola or your grandfather is hypertensive ano yung sinasabi ng doctor the doctor ay nagsasabi na ng restriction sa salty foods. No? Sa maaalat na pagkain, which is rich in sodium, because if you have increase in sodium level or mataas ang sodium mo, then it means mataas ang water level. At kapag mataas ang water level, it means that, no? It will also affect our blood pressure. Now, in case that we have decrease in blood pressure, ang sabi natin, RAAS will respond. And the question is, how this RAAS will respond in case that we have impaired uh, production or in, uh, impaired uh, what you call this? blood pressure. Pangit yung blood pressure natin. So, na yung ginagawa ng RAAS natin? Now, we have what we call the macula densa which will detect it. So, macula densa will detect the problem. Mababa ang sodium level, mababa ang water level, which means mababa ang blood pressure. So, since makula densa will detect that, no? uh, makula densa will detect that and will give signal to the juxta medullary or juxta glomerular cells within the afferent atrioi to produce renin. Okay? To produce renin. And what is the action of this renin? Renin secreted by the, by the juxta glomerular cells no will promote the production of angiotensin uh, will react rather will react in the production of angiotensin gen 1 no si angiotensin gen is a blood substance no a blood borne substance that will react with renin so that the liver will produce angiotensin 1 however angiotensin 1 in inactive form so, angiotensin 1 must be converted into its active form, which is angiotensin 2. Meaning to say, this angiotensin 1 will pass through to the alveoli of the lungs and will be converted into angiotensin 2. The conversion of angiotensin 1 will be, will be uh, possible to the help of angiotensin uh, of ACE, or what we call angiotensin converting enzyme. In the alveoli of our lungs, angiotensin 1 will be converted into angiotensin 2. And this angiotensin 2 is now in the active form. So what will be the effect of angiotensin 2? There are factors or there are uh, there are actions no, of angiotensin 2 which will promote the vasoconstriction no, and vasodilation. So, sino po yung magko-constrict? Sino po yung magna-dilate? As what we have discussed in the pressure, no, glomerular pressure, nagko-constrict yung isa, nagda-dilate yung isa. So, the action after the production of your angiotensinogen or angiotensin 2, no, we will have the production of aldosterone, we will have the production of ADH, we will have the dilation of the afferent arterioles and we will have the constriction of efferent arterioles. So that's the one of the actions, no? the effect of angiotensin 2. Iko-constrict si efferent, ida-dilate si afferent. Aside from that, angiotensin 2 will give signal to the hypothalamus. O oh, hypothalamus, since there is, a, there is a decreased level of water, then it is necessary for you to release, give signal to the pituitary gland to release antidiuretic hormone. Now, people, I want you to remember that our hypothalamus is the one who produces, who secretes antidiuretic hormone or vasopressin, and it is just our posterior pituitary gland. No? It is just our posterior pituitary gland responsible for the release and storage of this hormone. And the action of this hormone is the water regulation 
or water reabsorption, saan po magkakamaroon ng water reabsorption in the proximal convoluted tubule? Okay, the PCT, magkakamaroon ng water reabsorption. And once that there is a water reabsorption, ibig sabihin, at there will be a correction in the water level. Unti-unti nang tataas ulit ang water level sa katawan. Aside from that, angiotensin 2 will give signal to medulla, uh, uh, adrenal, medu adrenal cortex to produce aldosterone, to secrete aldosterone, a corticosteroid hormone responsible for the reabsorption of sodium no, through the passive and active transport. Now, mababa yung blood pressure mo kanina. Ano yung ginawa ng katawan mo? Na-detect ng makula densa. Si makula densa, sinabi kay juxto medullary, secrete renin. Renin reacts with angiotensin, angiotensinogen in the liver. So that liver will produce angiotensin 1. Sa angiotensin 1, nagproduce ng, uh, is si liver nagproduce ng angiotensin 1. Si angiotensin 1, ano siya? Inactive. So ano yung gagawin para maging active? Magpapas through po siya through the alveoli so that it will be converted into its active form which is the angiotensin 2. Makoconvert lang si angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 to the help of ACE, angiotensin converting enzyme. Si angiotensin 2, ano yung action? Ida-dilate niya yung afferent, co-constrict niya yung efferent. Mag-give signal kay hypothalamus to release so that the pituitary gland, posterior pituitary gland, will release what? Correct? Antidiuretic hormone. Si angiotensin 2 will give signal to <clears throat> adrenal cortex to secrete Aldosterone, a corticosteroid hormone that will promote sodium retention or sodium reabsorption. Thus, our kidney will be able to reabsorb water and our sodium. Sabi natin kanina, mababa ang blood pressure, mababa ang sodium, mababa ang water. Nareabsorb na si sodium, nareabsorb na si water, si blood pressure, unti-unti nang tataas kasi tumataas na ang blood uh, ang water level at ang sodium level. So, that is the action of our RAAS. Okay, that's the function of our RAAS. Now, sabi natin, nakakameroon tayo ng tubular reabsorption. And I want you to take note, guys, that the body can lose 1,200 ml of water containing essential substances every minute. Ba, sabi natin, 1,200 ml per minute yung nagpapas na water no, in our kidney. Therefore, the plasma ultrafiltrate enters the proximal converted tubule for the reabsorption of some nutrients through the use or through the help of two transport mechanisms. It can be through the active transport or passive transport. Okay? I want you to remember that in active transport, no, the cellular energy and carrier proteins needed for the transport back to the blood. Okay? Repeat. I repeat. In active transport, cellular energy and carrier proteins needed for transport back to the blood. So, nire-reabsorb nyo itong mga nutrients na to pabalik sa blood natin because these are essentials. These are, uh, what we call this, important. No? Hey, glucose, no, na-excrete po siya, na-filter siya ng ating blood, ah, ng ating glomerulus. So, tandaan, no, meron tayong tinatawag na glucose final threshold, which is 160 to 180 milligrams per deciliter. Kapag po yung ating threshold, yung capacity, maximum capacity of our glucose final threshold na meet na, so, wala na po tayong reabsorption of glucose. So, ibig sabihin, mataas na yung iyong glucose level. So, ibig sabihin, hindi na natin kailangan pang mag-reabsorb. However, if in case that you are still on the a normal level of your glucose threshold, then this glucose will be reabsorbed since this is a cellular energy, a form of cellular energy. No? Uh, glucose, amino acids, and salts will be reabsorbed in our proximal convoluted tubules. Okay? Chloride is reabsorbed in ascending loop of Henle. And sodium 
is reabsorbed in our proximal convoluted tubule as well as in the distal convoluted tubule. Now, I want you to take note and remember that sodium can be reabsorbed through active transport and passive transport. Ang sabi natin, active transport is reabsorption of cellular energy and carrier proteins that need for transport back to the blood. How about this passive transport? Remember guys that passive transport is controlled by substance concentration gradients on the sides of the membrane. Okay? And water is reabsorbed in the, through the help of passive transport. Okay? Water is reabsorbed in the proximal convoluted tubule, collecting ducts, and descending loop of Hindley. Urea no, is reabsorbed in the proximal convoluted tubule as well as in the ascending loop of Hindley. While sodium is reabsorbed again in the ascending loop of Hindley. So take note that sodium is reabsorbed via, via two mechanisms either active transport or passive transport. Kapag active transport, sodium is being reabsorbed in the proximal convoluted tubule and distal convoluted tubule, while in the passive transport is reabsorbed in the ascending loop of Hindi. Okay, take note of this. Since meron nga tayong tinatawag na glucose renal threshold na 160, to 180 mg per dl and our glucose is being reabsorbed by our proximal convoluted tubule if there are conditions that glucose appearing in the urine of a person with a normal blood glucose level that is a result of the tubular damage and not diabetes mellitus. Okay? A non-fasting patient with high glucose intake would not have normal glu blood glucose. So, ibig sabihin, you know, if a person have a normal glucose level and meron pong presence of glucose in the urine, you know, it means that there is an impairment, there is a problem in the reabsorption of glucose, particularly in the proximal convoluted tubule. Having said that there is a problem in the reabsorption of your glucose, then it means that the person or an individual is experiencing a tubular damage and not by diabetes mellitus. Okay? How about for the tubular concentration? Okay? Uh, remember, guys, that the descending loop, loop of Hindi uh, is, contributes to the passive transport of water into a highly concentrated medulla. While our ascending loop of Hindley, no, our walls, walls are impermeable to water, chloride are actively reabsorbed, and sodium is passively reabsorbed. We have what we call the counter, counter current mechanism, which maintains the osmotic gradient of the medulla. Maintenance of this osmotic gradient is essential for the final concentration of the filtrate, no, it reaches to the collecting duct. Now, uh, I, I want you to take note the, on this. No, in this illustration, we can see no, we can see the substances being uh, reabsorbed and where pusha nari reabsorb. Now, take a look in the descending, in the proximal convoluted tubule. No, the water is reabsorbed in the proximal convoluted tubule and water is reabsorbed no, through the passive transport. Okay? Wait lang. Next, uh, the water will go back to the blood no, because it's essential component of the blood. Okay? Uh, sodium Okay, sodium and sodium and chloride is reabsorbed no? actively and passively in the ascending loop of Hindley. Okay, 
and will go back to the blood, no, the efferent arterioles, no, so that uh, the what the sodium level and the chloride level, no, will be maintained, and then the filtrate will pass through the collecting duct going to the calyx, no, for the storage in the urinary bladder, bladder, sorry, urinary bladder, no. And to be stored in to be stored in urinal bladder for what we call excretion. That will be the the way or the process how our uh, nutrient is being reabsorbed. Now we have what we call the collecting duct concentration. So remember, guys, that the collecting ducts is the one responsible for the final concentration of the urine no? and the final filtrate concentration then the water reabsorption controlled by ADH and responsible to the body hydration no? take note guys that ADH controls the permeability of the distal convenient tubules and the proximal and the, I'm sorry and the collecting ducts okay collecting tubules no the amount of ADH produced by the hypothalamus determines the permeability of our collecting ducts. Again, take note of this one. If we, sabi natin, increase in blood, increase in water intake will affect our body hydration. So hydrated ka, you are well hydrated, then there will be decreased production of ADH. Bakit? Maganda yung hydration mo, ibig sabihin, hindi po ganun kailangan ang mag-reabsorb na mag ng water. And since maganda, mataas ang body hydration mo, mataas din ang iyong urine volume, yung urine output mo. Definitely, likewise, no, the other way around, decreased body hydration will cause, no, will give signal to our hypothalamus to release, to excrete ADH, kasi mababa yung water level mo. And since mababa na yung water level mo, kailangan i-regulate na yung water level for homeostasis, yung pong urine output mo, mababa na din. Okay? Now, we have the tubular secretion. Tubular secretion is the elimination of waste products not filtered by the glomerulus. Okay? So again, the function of tubular secretion is the elimination of waste products which are not filtered by the glomerulus. And take note, no, uh, the protein-bound substances, the regulation of acid-base balance is one of the function of our tubular secretion. Okay? So we have what we call the acid-base balance. So kanina, pinag-usapan natin yung acid-base balance. It's an important or important mechanism or important function of our kidney function or renal function. No? There are some, some analytes that will affect the acid-base balance, which are the bicarbonate, hydrogen, phosphate, and ammonia. Remember that bicarbonate filtered by the glomerulus and must be expediently returned to the blood to the maintain of the pH. No? Uh, it will prevent you know, the uh, hydrogen, the release of hydrogen will prevent the filtered bicarbonate from being excreted in the urine. Tandaan mo that the bicarbonate is the buffering system of our uh, kidney, of our body. Phosphate, an, an excess in ions not needed to return filtered bicarbonate are excreted instead of excreted as uh, phosphate, it will be excreted as phosphoric acid, no? And ammonia produced from the breakdown of amino acid glutamine now reacts with the hydrogen ion or proton. Take note that hydrogen ion is sometimes referred as the proton to form ammonium, no? So, these are the pathways, no? That affects the acid-base balance, Okay, so that will be the end of our first part of the lecture about the renal function. And the next part will be all about the renal function test. Okay, 
So I hope you learned and you were able to understand what are the different functions of our kidney.